Let me introduce myself. I'm a man of hate and disgust. Have you ever been so mad at the world and everyone who lives in it that you've seriously planned on going on a mass killing spree before inevitably turning the gun on yourself to end your own miserable life? Yeah, neither have I. Case in point, Hatred. A game where you play as what appears to be Nathan Explosion if he never showered, and your goal is simply to kill as many people as you can, because you're very upset at society. Or something. This protagonist, referred to as the antagonist on the official description, and not important from the launch trailer, is actually someone else entirely. If you watched an earlier episode of mine, you'd know that he's actually none other than an older, much more jaded Dodger. After Manzini passed on and his only friends left him, Dodger fell in some hard times and dyed his hair the color of his heart. He eventually dealt with Juice and his gang, permanently, and went into hiding underground for several years, plotting his revenge against the normies, which is where this game picks up. This indicates that Hatred takes place in the same universe as the Garbage Pail Kids Mytho. There was a great deal of controversy surrounding this game from its very inception. The now infamous reveal trailer was something that disturbed a lot of people, and for good reason. The civilians begging for their lives, the graphic executions, the protagonist's angry, suicidal, and homicidal monologue. It was enough to earn the game an adults-only rating. Even I was a bit unsettled by the trailer, I'll admit. And this is coming from the guy who finds Mortal Kombat 10's gore to be comical, or Fallout's VATS kills to be some of the funniest things ever to come from a video game. Hatred, on the other hand, seemed to go for a more realistic approach, and I'm not a fan of real violence. At all. Given that the controversy surrounding Hatred was enough to get it all but blacklisted before anyone so much as touched the thing, I've been of the mindset that it deserved a fair chance upon its actual release. Besides, if Hatred was able to actually make you sit down and think about the unpleasantness of violence while being a good game like some others have before it, it would be a waste to have it banned like some people would have wanted. So how does it hold up? Hatred begins with a short tutorial in Dodger's underground lair, showing you the game's basic controls and mechanics. For those watching this in 60fps, savor it while it lasts. Following that, you get to see the infamous trailer monologue play out, and the game begins. Almost immediately, the framerate takes a nosedive. It hovered around 30 to 45 my entire game, with some options turned down, and it actually dipped as low as 20 for a few scenes. I guess Destructive Creations were really going for a filmic look. It required a certain texture that gets lost at 60 FPS, and may have looked like something on the Discovery Channel or a made-for-TV sci-fi movie. Like I've said in other videos before, I don't have the highest-end hardware around, but I can play some other pretty demanding, graphically impressive, and even reportedly badly optimized games without issues like this. Many other people with much better PCs than mine are having similar problems, so I'm going on a limb here to assume that the optimization is just bad. And let's be honest here, does any of this look like it justifies performance like this? While the game's black and white visual style is certainly not a poor choice, with splashes of color thrown into the mix here and there, the character models really look dated when you see them up close. While the environments aren't especially interesting, they do fit the theme of the game just fine. Ranging from suburban areas, to a sewer, to a military base that makes me want to kill myself, to a military base, and even to a nuclear power plant. Oh god, I think I just named all the stages. If I do have to give this game praise for anything though, it's definitely the destruction physics, with explosives often causing large chunks of a building's interior to break apart and scatter. Unfortunately, destroying this environment causes the framerate to suffer even more, but at least it does look fairly impressive, and I would like to see what they can do with this engine in the future. One look at this game's protagonist and you fully expect a loud, brutal, metal soundtrack to match the game's angry tone. Aside from the end credits theme, which fits the bill for what I'd predicted, every other song is just kind of there. It's very stock, in the background stuff that didn't really leave much of an impression. Hatred's controls are adequate enough, hampered by the game's performance to be sure, but you don't have much trouble aiming, moving, and shooting. Unfortunately, you do end up getting stuck on the terrain frequently, with objects such as open doors getting in your way almost constantly. It's often unclear what objects you can vault over, and doing so feels strange in that you have to continuously move in that direction for a few moments before it registers. One thing that's very bizarre about this game is its health system. 
Instead of having regenerating health or a more classic system involving health pickups like medkits, the only way to recover health in this game is by performing executions. This is done after shooting, kicking, or blowing your enemies up but not quite killing them. Then pressing a button to start the execution up, which will then give you some health back. I suppose your character is just so angry and heartless that human misery literally sustains him. Dust to dust. Aside from this being highly unrealistic and stupid, it's also kind of distracting from a thematic standpoint, which I'll get more into later. The system is also very unreliable even at the best of times. It seems almost entirely random as to whether or not an enemy will be left in an executable status or just killed outright. Because this game is a twin-stick shooter, you have no way of aiming at a specific part on an enemy, like an arm or a leg, so you're completely at the mercy of RNGesus. This can lead to moments where you'll be starved for health and will have to run away from a fight with the police, SWAT, or military to prey on some innocent people who usually won't fight back. Cause you're a hero. The game's difficulty is something that shocked me much more than any of Dodger's absurd one-liners ever could. It's actually very easy to die in this game, especially during the final two stages. Enemy gunfire is difficult to avoid, and you'll find yourself swarmed very often. What's more is that cars will kill you instantly. For what it's worth, you're actually immune to being run over during some executions though, because reasons. This combined with the awful frame rate, getting stuck on terrain, and the unintuitive choice of health system means that death will come often for you if you're not careful. And even if you are careful, the limited field of vision you have and the enemy's ability to see and shoot you from great distances means that the game is shockingly difficult and annoying to play for something that's meant to be a macabre power fantasy. In an era with checkpoints being a staple of most games, hatred doesn't follow this trend, at least not entirely. You'll be awarded a respawn point after completing side objectives throughout the stages, all of which boil down to, go here and kill people. Variety at its finest. The respawn points allow you to keep your progress throughout the stage if you die, and you'll be put back in a safe place to recover and continue your quest against the normies. If you run out of respawn points though, you'll start at the very beginning of the stage all over. While the levels in this game aren't too long, it becomes incredibly tedious having to start over from scratch. This isn't so much an issue in the first couple of stages, but by the time you're going against the military with fully automatic weapons and rocket launchers, you can be mowed down in a matter of seconds. Just like with AVGN Adventures, the difficulty and frequency of player death and hatred seems to be a deliberate design choice in order to pad its length out. You could make the argument that Adventures did that because it was partially a tribute to old, terrible NES games. Well, that's a poor excuse in my opinion. Hatred doesn't even have that going for it. Even after having died numerous times, I finished the game after about three hours. For $20, considering the game's numerous issues, bad performance, and lack of content, that's really not the best deal around. It's kind of funny how Steam's refund system was dramatically revamped just after this game's release, isn't it? Just like with any other overpriced, overhyped product, you're paying for the name. In this case, though, you're paying for the controversy behind the name. Let's talk about this game's controversial content now, shall we? Oh. This is a recording and I'm the only one talking here. I forget that sometimes. The story in this game is as bare bones as you can get. Your character just hates everything and wants to kill as many people as he can before he gets killed in the process. That's really all we get. His motivation for killing people is completely unclear, so you're really not sure why you should even be doing this. A lack of information for a killer can be effective and can make them mysterious and human and even more terrifying as a result. Two excellent examples of this would be Michael Myers from Halloween and Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original versions that is. We weren't really given a lot of in-depth backstory on these characters. Their motivation was that they were just pure evil or deranged. The more their origins were expanded upon in the sequels and remakes and the more was explained, the less effective and scary they'd become. But most importantly, Neither Michael nor Leatherface ever fucking, fucking talked. By contrast, Dodger never shuts his mouth, but he may as well not be saying anything at all. He's always spouting some vague nonsense about hating politicians, hating the world, calling people worms, and just extremely generic angst. There's not an ounce of wit to anything he says, nor is there a shred of humanity. 
The way he speaks is the way someone would type on an early 2000s vampire role-playing forum made by 15-year-olds who think they're shocking their parents. It's impossible to be scared by him, shocked by him, or left with any real impression aside from laughter. Dodger's dialogue and delivery isn't the only one that stands out like this either. The civilians will sometimes sound scared, sure, but there's numerous instances of characters who sound way too nonchalant about what's happening. Whoa, I'm getting out of here! And, what are you, crazy? Are not things you'd say if you saw someone gunning down dozens of people in front of you and certainly not in that tone of voice. Nor would you be running around in circles, getting stuck on terrain, or running towards the gunman on purpose like it was a video game. But this is a video game, I can already hear people saying. Yes, I realize that. But it brings me to my next point. Hatred was very clearly marketed by both its developers and by people decreeing it as the devil itself long before it came out, as a disturbing, deplorable, grimy, unpleasant, and ultra-violent game. It was a game that, if done right, had the potential to leave all kinds of unpleasant feelings with both critics and audiences, and be a good game at the same time. Hatred achieves only the former, and only on the most basic of levels. One could say that it also fills the player with a certain remorse. Buyer's remorse. The first couple times you perform a graphic, semi-realistic execution, it's kind of effective. It's not pleasant to look at, and it could be potentially upsetting to some people. You just killed an innocent person who had nothing to do with you, and they didn't even try to fight back. Here, after having just seen Dodger's somewhat corny but still rather angry declaration at the beginning, it carries a bit of shock value. When you do it for the 10th, 20th, or 50th time though, you just get bored. Desensitized, if you will. You know what you're playing isn't real, and after you've had some time to see just how unrealistic the game is in its dialogue, its absurd body count, the strange AI, and the fact that you can magically siphon health by executing people with guns, any semblance of shock that this game once had just vanishes. The offensive gimmick of killing innocents is even more derailed by the fourth stage, which is ironically enough on a train. Some of the civilians will literally just sit there waiting for you to execute them. They make no effort to escape, fight back, or even ask you to not kill them, and you can clearly see that they were programmed this way. It's at this point especially when I was taken right out of the game's world. Dehumanization is something that gets brought up a lot in video games, but this is probably the most literal example of it I've ever seen. These civilians on the train are nothing more than health items. The fact that Dodger is apparently strong enough to cause someone's head to explode by stomping on it is a perfect example of how Hatred's violence can't decide what direction it wants to take. It's not realistic or serious enough for it to be unsettling, nor is it over the top enough to the point where it's just good clean fun with a dark sense of humor. The dialogue, too, occasionally rides the line where it could be construed as satirical, but then you hear our hero say this, You reek of weakness. You cunt. And you realize you're probably just looking too deeply into it. This is coming from someone who absolutely loves looking too deeply into things, keep in mind. Hatred falls into an extremely awkward middle ground from a thematic standpoint. We're given a protagonist that's poorly written and unrealistic, but with so little in the way of comedy or excess to frame that upon, we as an audience are seemingly supposed to take it seriously, and it all falls completely flat. To illustrate my point on how ineffective the shock in this game is, I brought in someone who's never seen Hatred and asked them to read some of the dialogue in this game along with me. Take it away, twerk. Tork. Oh. Huh? Are you crazy, buddy? Only my weapon understands me. Birds of a feather die together. Holy shit, I'm out of here. This is madness! You don't deserve a natural death. Can you hear your guardian angel crying? I can. Mother! My god, it's a psychopath! It's time to shoot some canned meat. <laughs> Sometimes, I think I kill them too fast. And so on, you get the idea. The suffering uh, flowing through my thank veins. You. It's like the thank most you, intense Tork, drug all. and I need more! Much uh, more! We're done, actually. I didn't put that in the script. How did you know about that line? What line? There's a number of things that I think Hatred could have done that would have made it both a better game and a better narrative. It's too late now, I realize, but who knows? Maybe someone will see this video and make their own better game about a psychopath who kills a bunch of people 
and my input could be their inspiration. Personally, I could think of no greater honor. We're only really halfway there. It's time for a two-part episode. See you next time.